I want to start by saying Brakathi Yahawa, Brakathi Yaharashai, Brakathi Yahawa, Brakathi Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawa Ba Shim Yamashai, Kohala Yahawa Ba Shim Yamashai, Ba Shim Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. Ba Shim in the name of his only begotten son. For the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer. He is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. Ba Shim in the name of the Rakah Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. The so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or other speckled bird, looking like the other nations in your spirit, bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh by Hashem Yerushai. You could be one of the elect. Shalom. We would discontinue from our heritage because we went all following after false gods and false idols, not following the law, such and commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through our Lord Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, being that perfect sacrifice in the flesh to the Heavenly Father, he's been given all power to be able to sit on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to be able to open the seals of this book, to be able to give the understanding and the warning, the instruction to the very elect. And the elect would be able to understand, and they would be quickened in the spirit to be able to understand what is going on in the world in the latter days, okay, which is... Famine, pestilence, and evils on the earth, and prophecy being played out, which prophecy is means to say before, okay? Um, and, you, and the Lord has sent forth his Holy Spirit to be able to um, have the prophets have the understanding of what is actually going on, okay? And the elect, the flock, okay, would follow uh, that suit as far as they would hear the warning, okay? And what we're seeing going on around the world is... The crashing of the petrodollar, which has been in control, been in power by America, which is the dollar that folds, okay, is being uh, taken away. And these different nations are going, um, they're going digital, okay, through a central banking digital currency, which will be governed by a blockchain, okay, which is nothing but the gradualism of the mark of the beast, which is Revelation 13 and 16, okay. And what we're seeing in these uh, certain countries like Australia is, um, you know, these bank collapses, okay, so this guy is speaking about what is going on and how it's going to be coming to America, okay, so it says, Australia, here we go, it looks like the collapse of the banking system is about to begin, banks are blocking transfers and cash withdrawals, making it very difficult to access your own money, okay, because what did the WEF uh, say, Carl Schwab said, he said that uh, you will own nothing and be happy, okay, and they are nothing but cult of personalities that are set up Okay, to be able to orchestrate uh, the plans of the elite that are in the background, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPont, the Warburgs, the Schiffs, okay, the wicked, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, okay, which are the biblical Edomites, the Idumians, the ones that are set up for great judgment, the ones that would have the fatness of the earth, control of the banking systems, okay, they would be the international bankers of today, and they would come forth with unrighteous decrees, they would come forth with um, uh, mischief, Okay, to be able to uh, bring forth the new world order. Okay, the Novus Order Sicorium, which is on the back of the dollar bill, and they would do it in the form of, uh, you know, cutting off resources, food, water, shelter, and people's livelihood. Okay, and this is the time to take heed, to take heed to the Lord, because these things are happening. Okay, um, so let me let me, the video play. So I ask myself the question, why are they doing that? And I believe it's a bank bail-in. I think we're on the edge of a bank bail-in. And I'm suggesting that if you have significant funds in a bank, you might need to have a think about what you're doing here. You try and get it out if you're in Australia and watch what's happening. Just shared, we're about to share a video on uh, the US. Another 3,000 banks have closed. They're closing ATMs in Australia. They're closing branches. They're doing the same in the US. They are driving us into having a CBDC. They are about to crash our currency. Our currency, I believe the US currency, is already in a free fall. It is collapsing. It's not when it collapses. It is collapsing. It's just people are looking and going, well, I mean, I look at the exchange rate, it's not that bad, and I'm like, give me a break, it's it's manipulated, those people own the exchange rates. I was in Australia. That's right, and they own it, okay, because they've been given the fatness of the earth, okay, to be able to control the, what the monetary system uh, that you see today, okay, when you go back to Genesis uh, 27 and 39, it speaks about the, the fatness of the earth, okay, um, and how they would have control over it. Okay, 
stock here. So a uh, bail in, I just looked it up on Google. It says, it says in a form, it says a form of financial relief for banks that are in danger of collapsing or going bankrupt. So what they use is uh, fractional banking. Okay, where you put in, say you put in a hundred dollars. Okay, they use basically ninety ninety dollars of that. Okay, to be able to fund other other programs because again, it's all it's all a scheme and a plot that the the elites use on the people, thinking that you got money in your bank account. Okay, but what we're seeing is these bank accounts are freezing, as he was saying. Okay, and when people, um, you know, are going to to pull out a significant amount of money. Okay, they're not able to get the money. Okay, they're not able to get uh, the money that uh, that they that they work for. Okay, because it's not really their money. They're under control of the wicked. Okay, you don't have um, you don't have control over of your assets, over your house, over your family, over the things that are going on, because the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. This is Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. So when you go into the fatness, okay, and this is speaking about Esau, how he was given, okay, the fatness of the earth by Isaac. Okay, and this is what the fatness is. Mashman. Strong's H, 4924. Mishman. Mishman. Okay. Second entry. Shemanim. Shemanim. So again, fertile place, richly prepared food. Who has a fertile place where they're able to grow, where they have their own yard, the white picket fence? Okay, who has that? The so-called Edomites. Okay, the so-called white men of today. Richly prepared food. Okay, we have to go to 7-Eleven, the local bodega, go to these food, these food, uh, uh, places that have nothing but GMO foods in it have all sorts of uh, chemicals in them. Okay, while they they have their own prepared, uh, you know, animals that they're able to you know butcher right there, and able to have fresh you know fresh gardens and things like that. Okay, oil. Yeah, who controls the oil system when you have Russia over there controlling oil, which they're also Edomites. Okay, um, who controls the oil? Far as the 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 um, you know Esau Edom. Okay, he always has his hand far as even with the, the Saudi Arabia, the Ishmaelites, okay, the Elamites, you know, both those nations over there having uh, the Ishmaelites particularly, okay, so they have a lot of the oil, okay, and, but what do they have to do? They have to trade in that petrol dollar, okay, showing you that Esau Edom is the one in control, but they're both, um, they're both on the, you know, they're both on the same side of the fence far as when it comes to Psalms 83, that crafty council. Fatness, stout, vigorous, fertile spots, places, okay? They have their own lands, their own islands, okay? They fly on jets. They have boats, okay? They have the richest of the earth. When you look at the CEOs, okay, of these different companies, look at who they are, okay? Um, you know, far as where, where they actually come from, okay? Their lineage, okay? Going, then they always go back to what the Edomites. Look at who's in power, okay? The you wishes. Okay, so they have the fatness of the earth and the dew of the heaven. Okay, and this is showing you that this is not our rest. Okay, and that what this is going to lead to is, um, you know, these unrighteous decrees through what their policy. Okay, where you're not, where they're saying that you have money in your account, but now you don't. Okay, and this is going to create where a uh, sedition against the government. Okay, Isaiah 10 and 1. I want to read this in the uh, NET because they're crafting it and they're and they're uh, forming it to to for the society to be ahead. Okay, that if you uh, want want some sort of income, then you have to come to the government, which government means mind control, which is going to be um, you know these different blockchains. Okay, controlled what digitally. Okay, with the, the digital um, you know a physical mark being embedded inside your hand or your forehead. Isaiah 10 and 1 in the NET, those who enact unjust policies are good as dead. Those who are always instituting unfair regulations. Yeah, so these are unfair regulations. When you worked your whole life and you have a savings or whatever, now you can't even access it because uh, EMP has hit it, which they're also um, you know, set up to, there's going to be certain events that are going to be happening coming soon. Okay, and even the FBI and the CIA are, are saying uh, that these events are going to happen. Because of the things that are going on over there in Israel. Okay. 
and they are bringing forth a crooked statues, okay, on the people that, which is a siege, a military tactic to have those inside bowing down to uh, the beast system, which the beast system is the Roman Empire, the deadly wound being um, healed, okay, um, and coming in the form of America spearheading the charge and NATO joined unto it. And these different heathen nations have signed over their rights, okay, to uh, sovereignty, which means they give all their rights to the WEF or, or these different blockchains, the I, IMF, International uh, Monetary Funds. They give all their money to them or in all their rights, okay? And then, um, you know, so they're un under the, um, you know, the, the, the laws of these unelected officials, okay? Which is going to lead to um, you will owe nothing and be happy, okay? And where, um, you know, because of your convenience, people are going to want to go, um, you know, go the way of the beast, okay? Follow what the, the beast system Okay, and, and follow their image, their philosophies, because if you speak against their philosophies, then you're going to be called a dissident or you're going to be called um, extremists or radicalists. And that's what they're forming. Also, with the things going on over there in Israel is they're forming, um, you know, that that if you're against what they're what's going on over there with those small hats, then you are, uh, you know, you you're pushing hate speech. Okay. So this is the time that we're headed into where um, bank accounts are going to be frozen because of what you speak. Okay, Isaiah 29 and 21, it says that make a man offender for a word that lay a snare for him that reprove in the gate and turn aside and just for a thing of not. And that's what they're doing. They're perverting, um, you know, the truth or slacky. Let me let me say it better. Um, let me just read this. Isaiah 29 and 21, those who convict the innocent because they can't do anything against the truth before the truth. OK, but what they're doing is they're, they're saying something. This is what they're saying. 20 Abba Shemar Shai. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And that's exactly what they're doing. Okay? Because they're saying, hey, there's no other option. This is the only option that you have. And we're, we're here to help you. Okay? But what does this say in Sirach 14 and 7? If he doeth good, he doeth unwillingly. And at last he will declare his wickedness. And what's his wickedness? putting that mark embedded inside your hand or your forehead, okay, to be able to control your buying and selling, okay, that's his last ditch effort, because why, because Esau Edom knows he has no place of repentance, and misery loves company, okay, so he's painting something as, you know, as something that's beautiful, but it's actually all rotten inside, okay, and that's what the the, the mark of the beast is, it's, it's for a, a convenience, okay, and the elect are not going to bow down to the image of all because they have the understanding, they have the wisdom of what it actually entails, okay? And this is going back to, um, because you're going to have a lot of people fall out because now um, the truth is going to be persecuted, okay? It always was, but but now it's going to be on the front page as far as, you know, if you're saying this, you know, we're coming to your house or, or we're, we're, we're cutting off your assets as far as in your bank account, okay? Because that's when the rubber meets the road, when when... Uh, yeah, when, yeah, you're out on the highways and the byways, but well, what you're going to do with no money? Okay. When there's no money in the account, are you still going to trust in the Lord? And that's going to be the trial of the testimony of our faith. Okay. He that endures to the end shall be saved because the Lord said, we're going to have food, water, and shelter. He's going to take care of us through the wisdom that he would give us. Okay. But we have to, um, go down that straight path, which is a position of difficulty. Okay. Through much tribulation, we shall enter to the kingdom. Okay, knowing that the Lord has sent forth peace, which is the comforter, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai, and also the writings, the the you know the prophecies, okay, the um, the prayers, the comfort, okay, that that um, you know the Lord has mercy on us because He's showing us what is actually going to happen before it happens. Okay, Isaiah twenty nine and twenty one: those who convict the innocent by false testimony will disappear, and that's what they're, exactly what they're going to be doing because they're going to say that. Hey, they're reading that Bible. They're against what, what we're pushing. Why? Because they are the wicked. Okay. And we are what contrary to the, to their, uh, to their ways. Okay. Far as the elect are contrary to the ways that Esau, Edom are pushing because the Lord told us not to take it. Okay. But they're going to say, Hey, you have to take it to be able to buy and sell in the society. Okay. Isaiah 29 and 21, those who convict the innocent by their false testimony will disappear. A similar fate awaits those who trickery, those who use trickery to pervert justice. Okay. And they're going to use the wiles of the devil. 
okay, by saying that you want to eat, you know, and people are going to look at their family, they're going to look at, the, you know, their women, okay, and a lot of the reason why they're going to take it is because of their women, okay, you're not a man, you know, you, you know, you don't want to, <laughs> you know, so things like that, okay, you, we saw that happen a couple years ago, okay, where people just openly, they just put the threat out there to, you know, of, of livelihood, and what happened, people went right down there, okay, and this is going to be the end all to be all far as when they when they come in like a flood for this, when when the mark of the beast is set up in an oinkment in sense, OK, here in America, and throughout the four corners of the earth, wherever there's commerce, that's when uh, the Lord's going to uh, raise up that standard for his elect. That would be considered the hour of temptation. OK, where the Lord has to be supping with you to be able to endure to the end. He has to be intimate and blissful like he's doing right now, far as working on our minds to be able to uh, stand firm on that rock. Okay, Isaiah 29 and 21 in the NLT in the middle, a similar fate awaits those who use trickery to pervert justice, who tell lies to destroy the innocent. And that's what they're going to be doing. They're going to be telling lies to destroy the innocent. Okay, because what they're going to say is that uh, we're uh, uh, pushing violence. Okay, but we're just speaking what the Bible is speaking about. Because we know that a, a cardinal mind is enmity with the Lord, okay? Our weapons of warfare are not cardinal, okay? And how we wound our adversaries is with this holy sword, which is what the scriptures, okay? That's how we take down our enemy, okay? With the power of Yahweh Shemashai's words that he puts in our mouth, our, our adversaries are being made bare, okay? And that's what they can't understand because they are cardinal, okay? And so they're going to come what cardinal means far as using uh, enchantments, using sorcery, using trickery. OK, to, that's why a man's foes are going to be of his own household, because you're going to have a lot of people fall for the wiles of the devil. OK, they're going to fall for uh, those things, but the elect are not. OK, because it's coming down to what crunch time where there's going to be a persecution. <clears throat> OK, which is going to lead to these different bank accounts freezing. OK, and where people where they're going to set up uh, programs. OK, and what that is, is problem action solution. OK, the Hegelian dialectic. Okay, um, pressure from below, pressure from above, order out of chaos, order out of chaos. Okay, we create the Esau Edom creates the problem. Okay, the people start reacting to it. Okay, and then right there they got the solution. What's the solution? Uh, take this, um, you know, um, you know, take this UBI universal basic income. Okay, take this at first, and then got you. Now they got you. They got you with that bait. Now you, you nibble it on the bait. Okay, now they're gonna pull that hook, which that hook is gonna be the mark. Okay, just take this. We'll give you. We'll give you more money. Don't worry about it. We'll give you more money. Um, you know, we're gonna give you a, a house over here in a fifteen-minute city. You know, every everything is set up all nice. You know, fake grass, fake trees, fake people, transhumanism. Okay, merging human with robot. Okay, Psalms one hundred nine, and they could be able to watch your every movement, controlling your carbon footprint. You know, where you go, what you say, how many times you have sex with your wife. OK, um, your your uh, what you say, what you do, because it's going to be controlled by a um, social credit score. OK, so if you're saying good things about the president, it goes up. If you're against the president as far as the things that they're doing, OK, then you are going to um, have a lower score, which means ultimately you will be put in these different camps that they have, which are these martial law centers. OK, these these FEMA camps that they have set up, which which they come in the form of green zones and they come in the form of uh, cooling centers or heating centers. OK, whenever you see these certain disasters, what do they have? They have these centers set up. And what do these centers give them? <laughs> you know, they give them all sorts of types of stuff. OK, they, they they get them on the hook. They're doing that here in San Diego with with the homeless people where they they'll give them a place to live. OK, but they have to follow certain regulations. And, and when. Those regulations are going to come down. It's going to come in the form of the mark. Okay. So this is Psalms 109 and 2. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. So that's what they're going to be coming with is what the great persecution on these scriptures. Okay. That you have that Bible. Uh, we already see the demonization far as, uh, you know, some of these things look like setups far as uh, different groups fighting in the streets with, with, with other groups. OK, and that leads to where um, where they can be able to set up pictures and say, oh, yeah, see, they're violent. OK, um, the elder bishop did a video and it was showing, you know, the carnality of, of, of some Israelites. OK, but that's why not everybody is of Israel. OK, not everybody's of the elect. 
because the the elect, the hopeful elect, would not be um, pushing carnality. Okay, would not be pulling up on nobody. Okay, they would be re, uh, eat the whole roll and go out and teach. Okay, because that's what the Lord Yahweh Shemar Shai told us to do. Okay, but the wicked is going to paint that as, uh, we're, you know, as a broad brush. Broad brush. They're or we're all the same thing. That's why we have to stay in the scriptures. Okay, because that great persecution is coming down. This is Psalms 119 and 16. It says, because thou, it says, because that he remembered not to show mercy. So this devil is not going to show any mercy. Okay, but persecuted the poor. And who is the poor? Okay, the ones that are, we're at the uh, the bottom. We don't have a military. We don't have no one in Congress fighting for us. Okay, we are the poor and needy men that he might even slay the broken in heart. Yeah, so let me read this in NLT. For he refused all kindness to others. Yeah, he refused kindness. There's no treaty. There's no deal with the Israelites, okay, that Esau Edom has. Why? Because he has a perpetual hatred. And if he does something, he does it unwillingly. Okay, he'll come in the form of, of, of being nice, but he's actually being that serpent. For he refused all kindness to others. He persecuted the poor and needy. He, had, he, sees he hounded the brokenhearted to death. That's right. And that's what you see our people uh, trusting in this devil. You know, they'll, they'll get the food stamps and things like that in, in Section 8. But what will they do? They'll live in the ghetto, uh, you know, the ghettos and the vadios and the reservations. Meanwhile, you got a, a check, but then you live in the worst conditions. You live in, uh, you know, um, rat infested areas. And that goes into the uh, the curses. It goes into, you know, these, these landlords that don't fix anything. Where there's drugs in the community, there's guns in the community. Then there's a constant patrol. You know, you got the uh, uh, modern day... Uh, you know, slave masters watching over you, okay, patrolling just your neighborhood, okay, and um, you know that leads to death, which is the, which is what Esau Edom is set up to do. He set up to uh, deceive, okay, to kill and to destroy, okay. But Yahweh is set up that we may have life, that we may have hope, okay, and then through that hope, okay, we're actually rich, okay, we're what rich in faith, okay, and that those riches are going to be. Uh, what's able to, to, to give us uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, okay? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, because that would be the spiritual riches, okay? While this rest of the world is looking for carnal riches, because the Lord's going to give uh, the hopeful elect their daily bread, okay? They're going to they're gonna get their daily bread. They're getting it right now, okay? Brothers ain't living in, you know, you know, the, <laughs> you know <laughs> and we're driving on jets and, you know, driving on jets you know far as the the hopeful elect okay the head apostles they're not driving on jets and things like that okay but we're we're well off because we realize what is actually going on okay and what's actually going on is a changing of power okay um between the the petrodollar going away the digital currency coming in okay and that crashing the, the enterprise crashing, the new world order crashing and bringing in our Lord Yahweh Shai. Okay, a changing of uh, uh, a currency. First Timothy 6 and 17, charge them that are rich in the world. It says that you be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living power who give us, us richly things to enjoy. Yeah, the Lord has given us richly things to enjoy. Okay. Um, and so, because true riches is actually... Uh, this wisdom, okay, when you read, let's see if we can get one, yeah, so Proverbs 3 and 14, for merchandise is better than Merchandise of silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. She is more precious. She, speaking about wisdom, is more precious than rubies. All things thou canst desire is not to be compared unto her. The length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are always her her socket. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and her paths are peace. Yeah, so peace. So while the rest of the world is going to be in, in utter chaos, the Lord has sent us for his peace with this knowledge, wisdom, understanding, which makes us rich. Okay far as uh, mentally and spiritually. Proverbs 3 and 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Yes, so happy is everyone that retaineth her, which is what going to be the elect. Okay, they're going to be able to attain uh, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding. And they have the understanding of what 
um, the mark of the beast actually is. While the rest of the world, they're going to trust in uncertain riches. Okay. This is uh, Proverbs 23 and 3. I'm going to go back to the video. This is Proverbs 23 and 3. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, don't desire all delicacies. Okay. The dainties, the things in this world, you know, um, that's why it speaks about in Proverbs 30 and about seven, it speaks about give me um, my daily bread, roughly paraphrasing also in the, our father's prayer. Okay. Um, you know, the daily bread, uh, so we can be able to keep pushing this word. Okay. Um, not, not a whole bunch of, uh, luxury things because everything here is going to be destroyed anyway. Okay. So Proverbs 23 and three in the NLT, it says, don't desire all the delicacies for he might be tricking it says, but he might be trying to trick you. And who's trying to trick you? Esau, Edom. Okay? Because he is the one that's in the power seat. He's the one that's in control of the assets that are going to be in your bank account. Okay? But what he can control is um, your mindset. Okay? Your mental your mental, your mental, mental uh, ability, your mental and your spirituality. Okay? Towards the Lord. The relationship that you have with the Lord. Okay? Delicacy. Delicacy. Fineness. Intricacy of texture, just structure. So again, the the things of this world, okay. Your car, you know, your your uh, your house, okay. Those things, all those things are going to be destroyed here, okay. So don't worry about those things when they when they go away. Now, am I saying quit your job? You know, go be homeless. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that those things are going to eventually go away because we're headed into a time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, where the assets are going to be closed, and when you go to your bank account, it's going to say uh, uh, insufficient funds. Okay, and you're going to try to call down to the bank. Okay, and the bank's not going to be answering nobody's calls. Why? Because it's going to be millions of people calling. Okay, it's going to be millions of people calling to, to get their funds, which is going to create the order out of chaos. Okay, because what is Esau Edom trying to do? He's going to come with that solution, which that solution is here. Here's the UBI, but you have to take this which is the mark of the beast. Proverbs 23 and 3. Don't desire all the delicacies for he might be trying to trick you. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In the blink of an eye, wealth disappears for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. Don't eat with the people who are stingy. Don't desire the delicacy. So people are going to eat with the stingy. Who's that? Esau, eat them. They're going to be breaking bread with the heathen. Okay. And what's going to happen with that is that's going to lead to the destruction. Okay, that's going to lead to uh, the blast of the fire. Okay, this is um, because you're going to get caught up in what the webs, um, you know, of, of, of uh, what Esau Edom is pushing. Okay, let me get that. This is Isaiah 59 in the NLT 5. It says they hatch deadly snakes and weave spider webs. Yeah, they hatch deadly snakes. So these snakes are these different uh, uh, different plans that they have. Okay, and these spider webs is when you get caught into them. You get caught into uh, thinking that you know I got this. I got this universal basic income. They give me twelve hundred a month. I'm good. They give me this housing. I'm good. Look at I got a fly outfit on, and that's it. Okay, and that's it. When they don't realize that it's all a trap and a snare. It's it's a, it's a it's a web. Okay, and where the where the traps are, um, you know serpent <laughs> serpent bitten. Okay, where where you've been bit with that serpent. Okay, which is Esau Edom and his philosophies. Isaiah 59 and 5, they hatch deadly snakes and weave spider webs. Whoever falls into the webs, they will die. That's right. And there's danger even in getting near them. Yeah, there's danger even in getting near them because um, not only you have Esau Edom, but you also have the two thirds. Okay, that's why a man's foe is going to be of his own household. And that's why 1 Peter 4 and 17 speaks about the judgment shall begin at the house of Israel. Why? Because uh, um, there's Israelites out there that are not of the elect. Okay, the uh, the elder Mata Zagba, uh, GMS South Carolina, did a video about that yesterday. Okay, and so not everybody's of Israel. Okay, not everybody's of the elect because they're not coming in the form of that. Okay, they're not they're not doing the ways that please the Lord. Okay, and that's why it uh, speaks about not uh, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay, and going into also you know. Uh, you know, what fellowship with thee, you know, what fellowship does the Lord have with idols? Okay. And when you're have 501c3 contracts or you're lusting after uh, uh, you know, a certain member, you know, you, you love the cult of personality. 
Okay, that's going to lead to your destruction too, because that's why you have to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Okay, this is not, um, you know, you know, about a group. Okay, this is about your individual walk. Okay, and when you read, we just get the scripture because everybody is going to have to walk down their own path. Okay, you're not always going to be in a group, right? You know, there's going to be certain times where you might not be by the brethren. OK, where you're going to have to walk that walk by yourself, just like we do when we go into our house or, or whatever. We, we're by ourselves. OK, that's the Lord working on our minds. That's actually the Lord supping with us. OK, and that's going to be that intimate time, that hour of temptation where the Lord has to uh, Lord will and be with us. OK, this is Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because the days are evil. Okay, these days are going to be evil, bad times. Okay, but the Lord has given us comfort and given us peace by giving us the understanding, giving us the play by play of what is going to happen. Okay, to not get caught in these webs. Let me read this again Isaiah 59 and 5. It says, They hatch deadly snakes and weave spider webs. Whoever falls into the webs, they will die. And there's, the, yeah, because they built up a level of, uh, of, of money worship. You know, they made money an idol, you know, to, to worship that dollar bill. Okay, the worship of those dead presidents and what has happened, our people will kill over a dollar or kill over a penny. Okay? Because they because they see it as value. Okay? Which which is really no, it's actually a debt. Okay? Now um now we use uh, money as a defense. Okay, but people are gonna what pierce themselves through for this. Uh first Timothy six and ten speaks about that. Okay. Um you know, many sorrows they're gonna be pierced through because they they're for their convenience, you know, they're going to want those delicacies, they're going to want the, the dainties, they're going to want the, the things that they've been doing, because they've been uh, accustomed to that in this society, especially the women, okay, they've been accustomed to a certain uh, life of living, okay, and they're going to want, want those things, and they're going to have men that are part of, the, you know, the family or whatever, you know, going down there to get it, okay, and that's going to lead to destruction, and uh, that woman also goes into the philosophies, Okay, because they're going to be following what that strange woman. Okay, Isaiah 59 and 5 again. It says, they hatch deadly snakes and weave spider webs. Whoever falls into the webs will die. There is danger even in getting near them. Their webs can't be made into clothing and nothing they do is productive. Nothing they do is productive. Okay, because why? Because they are the wicked. Okay, they are the wicked. They're set up for, uh, they are the vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. They are the rulers of darkness. Okay, Malachi 1 and 4, they are the borders of wickedness. Okay, nothing they do is productive. Okay, let me get a scripture. This is Job 15 and 35. And then I don't see, it says, they conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb produces deceit. So their womb produces deceit. So since they've been in the um, power seat, you know, since that deadly womb was healed in about the mid-1300s, they've been... Uh, uh, plotting and scheming on how they can be able to implement their new world order, the Novus Order Sicorium, okay? And then you had a guy in, uh, you know, uh, was that? Adam, Adam Vesop or Adam Weisop, okay, in 1776, where they created what the, uh, the, the abol abolition, abolition of uh, destroying the society, okay, of, of controlling everything, um, you know, controlling the school systems, controlling the church, you know, controlling the people through the politics. Okay. And it's, a, uh, abolition. Yeah. Abolition, the action or act of abolishing a system, practice or institution. Okay. Scrapping at an end because ultimately they've set up these things, these schools and these, these hospitals and things like that. Okay. These, these politicians ultimately, so they can get rid of them. OK, because what was the whole point of that to be able to have people in, in, a, in a, um, a way of, uh, you know, delusion, thinking that they they have, a, you know, they, they have rights where they never did have rights. And they're finding that out through what their banking accounts being frozen. OK, so read this again. Joel 15, 35. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb produces deceit. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're producing deceit by um, their trickery. OK, by saying that this is a good thing when it's actually a bad thing. Okay, and they're setting traps and nets and snares for the people that are, are simple. Okay, it says Psalm seven and fourteen. It says the wicked conceive 
The wicked conceive evil. They are pregnant with trouble and give birth to lies. They dig a deep pit, which the pit is the system to trap others. They fall into it themselves. Yeah, because when they actually implement this uh, Mark of the Beast worldwide, okay, that's going to actually be a trap for them. Okay, that's going to be the snare because that's when the Lord's going to intervene the hour of temptation and be able to save the very elect and beam them up in the chariots. So the world immediately calls UFOs. Okay, and the north, south, east, west angels are going to come forth with the great destruction upon Babylon, the great and other parts of the world. Going into the uh, these different heathen nations, that's the last of the rulership. Esau, Eden will be um, gone into captivity for, for a thousand year period and he will be exterminated after that period of time. Okay. And that will be his ending because, again, um, Esau Edom has no place of repentance, okay, which is the so-called white men of today, okay, because of these evil uh, schemes and plots. He was set up only to deceive, but ultimately to be destroyed. The vessel of wrath fitted for destruction, okay. Isaiah 59 and 6, their webs can, it says their webs can't be made into clothing and nothing they do is productive. All their activity is filled with sin and violence is their trademark. Yeah, violence is their trademark. Going back to Genesis 27, okay, and 40, it speaks about they were given um, that great sword, okay? And that great sword is uh, their, their military, but also they've been given um, power to be able to deceive the nations, okay? So let me go back to the video. So, and, and then when you see you see his face, he's worried, okay? Now, hey, he, he, he you tell me what he looks like, okay? And these are the people, and I'm not saying that, you know, just saying, this is this is how uh, Esau would look as far as the, the description of Esau Edom. Now, we don't judge on the outward appearance, but this is how he would look, the, the red man, okay? This would be his pigmentation. His blood would be showing through, okay? And again... You're going to have Israelites that look like this too, okay? But the point is, is look at his face and look at what's going on. He thought that because he was trading and doing all that trading, now what? Okay, riches profit not in the day of wrath, okay? And these riches are are, are going away far as they're flying away, as I read in um, Proverbs, Proverbs 23. They're flying away because you trusted in things that are not to be trusted in, which is, which is the devil, which is the deceiver, which is Esau, Edom, okay? Slocky. And 20 years ago, and I went across the U.S., and, you know, we had major problems in those 20 years of, of exchange rates, and they stayed pretty consistent. And it's manipulated. And I, I, I traded in the Forex once, and it's manipulated. I got out as soon as that became very obvious. I'm sure there's people who have made money in that. This is not about one currency. This is about the system collapsing. The U.S. system drives the world. And as that system is, is broken, they, they are telling us. They're not hiding it. We've brought another system in. We have brought in the CBDC. Biden is a WEF member. The WEF is bringing that in. America's currency is going to be WEF-controlled central bank digital currency. So is Australia. We have it here already, ready to go. <clears throat> They're already doing uh, you know, cards out on the street that people can use. They are coupling the CBDC to cash, and then we're going to find that they will decouple the uh, CBDC from the cash as the cash goes into a hyperinflation freefall and the uh, CBDC is pegged to the rest of the world. It's a global one world currency from a one world government. Klaus Schwab's words and the words of the BRICS. If you haven't looked up BRICS, look it up. It's so also BRICS, what's BRICS is happening is on January 1st, they're having those six other nations joined unto them. Okay. Uh, and they are aligned against what uh, America and the NATO, okay, which is going to lead to, again, digital, because they're all on the same path as he's going to speak about, okay, but I want to get a couple of scriptures. It says, Micah 6 and 10, it says, they are yet, it says, are they yet the treasures of the wickedness in the house of the wicked in the scant measures? Wait, let me, uh, actually, this one right here, Micah 6 and 12. For the rich men thereof are full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. That's right. <clears throat> and he was speaking about the manipulation of the market, okay, of what uh, Wall Street, okay, um, and how they're uh, manipulating the numbers to, to act like they're 
uh, they're in a, a bull, I believe it's a bull market. Okay. When actually they're in a bear market, okay. Where they're just buying up their own, um, their own products. Okay. And then reselling them like they're, like they're actually going. It's just like when they, when they pump money into the, uh, they, um, you know, they're, they're putting out money, a bunch of dollar bills and they're sending it out into the, uh, you know, to be in, 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 in you know, in the currency, Okay, to be in the system, you know, far as they send it to the people, the stimulus, okay, but it's actually devaluing the dollar, okay, and so with the market, they'll, 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 they'll show it as it, it's good, but it's actually crashing, okay, the economy is actually being destroyed, because a bull market is when you're able to buy things that are actually there, okay, but they're not there, they're actually in a bear market right now, okay, but they're telling you lies and deception, because they're saying peace and safety while sudden destruction, that's why they're going to war, because in war, all wars are bankers wars. And it, it is a racket. War is a racket. OK, because uh, they were speaking about the guy uh, uh, McGregor. OK, uh, he was speaking about far as how much money they made in, when they were in Ukraine. And so how much money now you don't you're, you're not really hearing about Ukraine anymore. You're starting to hear about Israel. OK, and when they're in these wars, OK, uh, they make a lot of money. OK, and I'm talking about the very elite. OK, and what happens, our people end up being, you know, drafted or put in the military and they end up being on the front lines and dying while Esau Edom is sitting at their house chilling. OK, so I'm reading this again, Micah 6 and 12 in the NLT. The rich among you have become wealthy through extortion and violence. Your citizens are used to are so used to lying that their tongues can no longer tell the truth. And that's right. OK, because, again, when you keep telling the lie so long, people just believe that lie. OK, and that's what America has done. But that veil has been lifted up uh, the very elect and even amongst these nations. These nations know that America is full of full of uh, BS. But the thing is, is that these different nations are also part of it, too, because they all want the mark of the beast. OK, they all want it to be implemented because it's a power grab. It's a control because just because uh, you have the Edomites over here controlling um, the Western Hemisphere as far as America, you have the Eastern Edomites, which is Russia. OK, it's the, it's the you know. The, le the lesser of the two evils, they're both evil, okay? But what, what happened is they're divided. And what's, what's that? When the house is divided, what the, the kingdom cannot stand, okay? How can they be able to survive, okay? Ultimately going into uh, these words are as judgment that goeth forth, okay? The, the, this place is getting hewn and cut down. It's first of all being made bare because it's being exposed. They've never been exposed like this. They've always been able to cover it up. But now their end has come, Okay. Uh, we're in a multipolar world. BRICS is part of the WEF. Multipolar world. The uh, IMF has a coin, um, Unicoin or something they call it. They've released the CBDC. Okay, and what was the IMF or the IMF as far as the International Monetary Funds? But what was the Unicoin? The Unicoin was where the people they were paying people to come, uh, um, you know, come over there and basically scan their eye to be able to scan their, you know to be able to scan their eye, to get their identity, okay? And when they when they get your identity, okay, far as that way, okay, they can be able to do all sorts of certain things. They can be able to set you up, all, all sorts of things. That's why it's very important to stay in the scriptures, okay? Because these wicked devices are, are beginning to pass, but we have to see them pass because they have to be fulfilled, okay? And this is the fulfillment of prophecy, for there, there is a CBDC ready to go in your country. Globalism is knocking at our door. The currency is about to go. Wake up, go and try and get your money out of a bank here in Australia. And uh, if you've got any significant amount, or not even a significant amount, and you will get interviewed and you will get a hard time because I believe a bank bail in is on the way. Okay. And that's exactly what's going on is where the banks are taking your money and saying you don't got nothing in it. And then they're going to offer you a solution, which that solution is going to be the mark of the beast. OK, and this is how they're forming and fashioning it. OK, let's go to um, real quick. This is Psalms 37 and 7. These are the things that have to happen. Psalms 37 and 7. Rest in the Lord, Yahweh, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him that prosper in his way, because of man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And these are wicked devices, okay, because people are going to look at their family. And if you don't have wisdom, okay, to spiritually discern what is going on, okay, you're going to go down and take that, that physical mark. But you have to have the spiritual understanding of what it is and know that these uh, uh, these prophecies have to be played out.
Okay, and what's going to happen is many people are going to what pierce themselves through because they're trusting in uncertain riches. First Timothy six and nine it says, "But they that be rich fall into temptation." Yeah, so those that have been living a lifestyle of, um, you know, glitz and glamour, or or even a, you know just a, you know, you know, I got a house over here, I got a car over here, I got this girl, I got that girl. So they've been living rich, okay. Um, but they've been rich. They fall in temptation and a snare. Yeah, so they fall in these traps and these snares because they're actually putting themselves in debt because Babylon is nothing but an illusion. It's nothing but deception. It's nothing but a, a whore. Okay, what is a whore uh, uh, used for? Okay, she's used to what be used in, in abuse. And what happens is the people become a whores, you know, spiritual fornicators with, with, with um, you know, with, with this system, with this beast system. Okay, and they become a, a spiritual adulterers to the Lord. Okay, they become, um, you know, a, a sinful far as in the things that they do, and they will sell their soul, um, you know, for the riches of this world. Okay, when you read, uh, let me get a scripture. This is Mark 8, and that's what you see with these different uh, celebrities. They have sold their soul for the things of this world. This is Mark 8 and uh, 36 it says what shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul and that's what's going to happen is you you gain the mark you got the mark <laughs> you took the mark but now now the judgment you have rest no rest day nor night now you got a grievous sore and now the missiles are coming okay because you done sold your soul you trusted in esau right or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul so what you're going to give you okay now you gave your soul to the devil okay by taking the mark and now what? You sold out, and now your judgment. Mark 8 and 38. Whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, yeah, because when you uh, reject this word or you reject the truth, you're actually ashamed of the Lord you have a shot. And it speaks about that in Proverbs 13 and 13. Um, he that despises me, despises his word, has, you know, will, um, I gotta get that. Because <clears throat> the word is a commandment, okay? That word, uh, Hebrew word, the bar, okay, which means to be in the profession. And what happens when you're not in the profession? You, you eventually be fired, okay? You get a couple warnings, and then you're ultimately fired, okay? And the warning is is the, the reproof and the rebukes that are going out, the examples of what not to, you know, what not to do uh, far as to not tempt the Lord. Proverbs 13 and 13, who despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death, yeah, to depart from the traps and the snares, which one of them is the mark of the beast, Mark 8 and 38, whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me in my words and this adulterous, yeah, that's what I was speaking about, adulterous and sinful generation of him that also the son of man be ashamed. Yeah, the son of man is Yahweh Shai. When he cometh in the glory of his father with him with the holy angels, yeah, the time of uh, Jacob's trouble, okay, or the time of, uh, sorry, the time of trouble like never before, okay, um, that speaks about in Daniel 12 and 1, okay, and this is an adulterous uh, generation going into their, their spiritual uh, uh, adultery okay and also you know phys physically but also with the, the spiritual adultery by worshiping these other gods okay in the form of taking that mark first timothy 6 and 9 but they that be rich fall into temptation and snare unto thee many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men into destruction and perdition yeah men into destruction and perdition because what is happening you're having them form and fashion okay the mark of the beast they're causing it a poeo in the in the Greek, which means to form and fashion. Revelation 13 and 16, he calls it all both small, great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hands and their foreheads. So when you go into this word cause it, okay, because they're starting it in, you know, Australia, Ukraine, these different countries, because that is the, the and, and even uh, China, they're using those places as a blueprint, okay, on what, what's going to work and what's not going to work, okay, because Esau Edom does a diligent search. Okay, so I think it was right at the top. Yeah, Poeo. Strong's G, 4160, Poeo, Poeo. Okay, so the Greek 4160, okay, to make with names made to produce. So they are producing the society that you're going to see coming up. Okay, you saw the guy's face, how he was all hurt, you know. How he wasn't able to get money or, you know, certain he was right before that. I cut the video a little bit, uh, but he was talking about, uh, you know, uh, different scenarios. OK, construct 
form and fashion. Yeah, etc. The authors of, so they're the ones that are causing it. They're bringing it forth. Okay. Their womb produces deceit. Okay. And they're making, i.e., render, yeah, constitute. Yeah, so they're constituting these things. They're appointing, okay, appoint, ordain, declare. And what are they declaring? That they are the wicked. Okay, and here is our system. And if you don't want to follow our system, our new world order, okay, our great reset, our build back better, if you don't want to follow it, okay, then you will be called a dissident and you will be put in these different camps. The cause to bring about, to carry out, and right here, to carry out, to execute. Okay, and who is the executioner? Esau Edom. Okay, he's the one that's uh, Ezekiel 21 and 9, where it speaks about, um, you know, the the so. Uh, let me get it real quick. The sword is being furbished. Okay, Ezekiel 21 and 9, son of man, prophesy and say, thus said, Yahweh say a sword is, is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sword slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter, that it should make mirth and contend with the rod of my son as every tree. And he had given it to furbish that it may be handled. And his sword is sharpened and is furbished to give it to the hand of the slayer. Okay, when you read in the NLT, it says, yes, the sword is now being sharpened and polished. Yeah, so through the legislation, through the deception, through the enchantments, okay, that sword is being sharpened, whether it be by um, the actual physical sword, okay, the modern day gun, okay, the dogs to tear, going into Jeremiah 15 and 2, the um, the, the four um, things that are going to be happening. Let me get the, actually it might be the same. Yeah, right here. This is Ezekiel 14 and 21. For thus said the Lord, thy power, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the noisome beast, and the pestilence. So the noisome beast going into those ICBM missiles, okay, that are going to be firing off. And that's the judgment for you taking the mark of the beast, okay? Then you have the famine and the sword people fighting in the streets, okay, over food. Then you're going to have the pestilence going into the, the different things that are going to be played out. Get different plagues to cut off from man and beast. Yeah, so these are the things that are going to be happening. Okay, and right now that's being um, a furbish, okay, being sharpened by what the executioner, which is Esau Edom. Okay, but the Lord controls Esau Edom, so the issues of death belong to belong to the Lord, but He sends out Esau Edom as that rod of His anger. Okay, Ezekiel twenty one eleven. Yes, the sword is now being sharpened and polished. It is being prepared for the executioner. Okay, which is Esau Edom. He's been given what that great sword. Revelation 6 and 4 also speaks about it. Okay, so Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls it all. So he's form and fashioning it. Okay, Poeo in the Greek. Okay, form and fashioning it to what? Execute. Okay, to bring it forth. Okay, both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond. So it doesn't matter which, how much bank you got or don't got. Okay, to receive a mark. This mark is physical. Okay, the uh, goes into the Greek word. Okay, which is karagma, which is the actual uh, mark. Okay, like a rice grain, they want to bet inside your hand. Okay, with the karax, which is the instrument of the churl. Okay, like a syringe to, to put it inside of your hand or your forehead. Okay, and on that, uh, when you go into the root word of that, it goes into grafo. Okay, the Greek word grafo, which goes into information. The information that it will have, whether you will be able to buy and sell or not. Okay, um, you know. What is less desirable? If, if it's something that they don't think that you need, then they can just deny you. Okay. And this is how they're, they're forming their society to be. Okay. Through uh, the convenience, you know, by saying, hey, we don't need that. That dollar is dirty. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, they could, people could steal it, you know, uh, just like with the, just like with the, uh, the bank accounts, you know, you don't want to lose your debit card, do you? That's why you have the phone where people are tapping the phone. Okay. Because it's a form of tapping your hand. Uh, you know, uh, Amazon Palm, you know, pay with your hand at the Whole Foods. Okay, so these are all gradualism ultimately to the mark of the beast. It says to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, that's physical, but you have to have the spiritual discern that it's physical. Okay, 17, and that no man may buy or sell, so if he had the mark or the name of the beast and the number of his name. Okay. So no man may be able to what buy and sell. So you're not going to be able to just go down to your local bodega or your local 7-Eleven and be able to buy and sell. You're going to have to have, um, you're going to have to have that device. 
Okay, but the elect are going to be able to have food, water, and shelter. Why? Because the Lord's going to provide. Because He said He would provide. Uh, my servant shall eat. Okay, my servant shall drink. Okay, and we are serving the Lord right now. Okay, and that's why we got. And also, what in serving the Lord, you have to trust in the Lord and trust that He's going to be able to be there. Um, you know, when the when, when the the great blast comes. Okay, that great destruction. Okay, because when you go into that word uh, by. Okay, it goes into the Greek uh, allegor, allegora, okay, which is what? To be able to uh, buy, you know, buying and selling, okay, kinds of business, the marketplace, just like you have these these malls that are shutting down now. Those malls are going to be like martial law center or going to be FEMA camp centers, okay? But these, you know, when you go to the mall, you go to a certain marketplace, you, you got different, uh, you know, centers, that's going to be the buying and selling, okay, the allegora. Okay, might buy or sell. That that word buy goes into the Greek word algora, or sell. So if he had the mark, so you won't be able to buy and sell unless you have that mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Because if you take it, then you will uh, be pierced through. Okay, you will have that chai stai sigma. Eighteen. Here is the wisdom. Let him have understanding. Count the number of the beast for the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score six. So when you go into this right here, which is actually of a, and it says right there, a man. Okay, which is Esau Edom system. When you go to 603 square six, it goes back to the Greek, which is chai, which is the anointed on the left hand side, the psi, which is the crossing you out with their philosophies, and the stigma, which is something physical they want to embed inside your hand or your forehead to be able to control your buying and selling. And that would be a, a brand of of you being um being part of their system. Okay, and you will there is a judgment for taking that. And many people are going to what take that and be pierced through for many sorrows because they thought they had convenience, okay, and trusting in the devil. Because the devil means deceiver, 1 Timothy 6 and 9. And it, and also when it say wisdom is required, wisdom is required to understand that that, is, that mark is something that's physical, but you have to have spiritual discernment to understand that, okay? 1 Timothy 6 and 9. But they that be rich and fall into temptation and snare unto many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of evil. Yeah, so money is the defense. But to but to worship as an idol, okay, is the root of all evil. Which, while some covered it after they have erred from the faith, it pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's what you're going to have. People are going to be uh, piercing through with many sorrows because they're going to go back to the uh, you know, the old days. Okay. That's why it speaks about Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. Okay. Seek about, uh, speak the Lord or the days become evil. Let me get that. I'll get it over here. It's Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. Remember now the creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have my pleasure in them. I have no pleasure in them. And that's what you're seeing. People are languishing, people are mourning, and people are crying out. Okay. And what Esau Edom is going to do is he's going to frame it in a nice, uh, uh, you know, a nice box with a bow around it and say, I got something good for you. Because again, the times are going to be very dark. Okay. But the elect are not going to bow down to the image of Baal, which they're not going to bow down to the beast system. Okay. You have the love of money. Okay. Covered it after. Yeah, you wanted what, what, what Esau and Edom had. They have erred. Yeah, they have erred in what the faith. Okay, not trusting in the Lord. Okay, and then they what pierced themselves through. Pierced. Pierced through. Strong's G, 4044. Peripyro. Peripyro. And what does it say? 4040. Okay, 4044. Okay. Um, you know, which four means mercy. Okay, and three goes into what? Uh, uh, understanding. Okay. So the Lord um, has given us the understanding of what pierce through actually means. Greek 40, 44, to pierce through, metaphor, okay, a metaphor to torture one's soul with sorrows. And we just read Mark 8 and 32, okay? That means you're rejecting the Lord. Also, Proverbs 13 and 13, when you, when you bow down to the system and you're going to be tortured with one soul with many sorrows because you trusted in your oppressor. Penetrate, okay? Penetrate entirely pierce okay pierce pierce through okay and that's what people are going to do it they're going to have uh they're going to be pierced through uh with that um uh, that corrupts okay that syringe that goes inside okay 
with that karagma. See what this says. Okay. <clears throat> so we get the point. Pierce through. Yeah, so sorrows. And what are the sorrows going to be? Strong's G, 3601. Adune. Adune. Okay, consuming grief, pain, sorrow. That's the Greek 3601. Yeah, grief, sorrow, consuming grief. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Strong's G, 1416. Duno. Duno. Thayer's lexicon. Second entry. Duo. Duo. Okay, to go into, to enter. Okay, what would, what would you be doing? You would have, be having that device enter into your body. And the Lord said, make no cuttings in that flesh. Okay? So we get the point. Many sorrows. Okay? Pierce through. Okay? For what? For, for the convenience. Okay? Because again, it's going to be ugly. First Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. And that's what we're going to see. They're going to pierce themselves with many sorrows by trusting in their oppressor. Okay, while the very elect are going to trust in the Lord and know that the Lord is going to be able to provide for us food and shelter. Okay, um, when that when that time comes, the, what the hour of temptation, because we know that it's it's all a test. Okay, and so let me end it right there. This is Revelation 3 and 10. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept thy word of my patience, yeah, the long suffering, okay, um, you know, the commandments, you know, enduring to the end. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which the hour of temptation is where Esau Edom uh, is going to be implementing his mark of the beast worldwide, okay, and the hour is a very intimate time when you think about your life, okay, and the Lord has to be dealing with you because all sorts of things are going to be running through your mind, okay, and the Lord's going to give us the, the direct uh, you know, the direct way to go, okay, which is through that straight path, which is a position of difficulty. Keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the world to try them and dwell upon the earth. Yeah, so in an oinkin minute sense, wherever there is commerce, that's where there's going to be an uh, implementation of that mark. To try them that dwell upon the earth, behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take that crown. So uh, right now we have a crown of understanding, okay, but we have to hold tightly, we have to hurt hold uh, firm on it because we know the Lord is coming. It says Revelation 3 and 11, I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have, which is what? The truth. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take take your crown, okay? Because the victory comes in the, in the form of our Lord Yahweh Shai and this, this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, okay? So with that, Kohala Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rekakwadash, Shalom to Alek, Kwame Shalom.